Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. I have a couple of reviews today and then I have a request for recommendations at the end. So I will do my quick reviews first. Um, this one is middle grade. It's Help, I'm a Prisoner in the Library by F. Clifford. I never read this when I was a kid. I wish I would have because doesn't that sound like a dream getting locked in the library you have the whole night to yourself to like troll around and no one's annoying you by talking loudly on their cell phone or you could just do whatever so sounds nice to me but this was I think in the 80s this was written I should have looked but these two little girls whose sisters 79 1979 these two sisters are um there's it's set in Indianapolis in the winter and there is a bad snowstorm so the sisters and their mom and dad are in their, I think, station wagon um, going to the hospital or going to their aunt's house because their mom is going to have a baby. So they're going to drop the daughters off at the aunt's house and the aunt is going to watch them while mom's having the baby. But they run out of gas on the way there. Dad goes out to get gas. He walks away um, and the two little girls, the youngest one has to go to the bathroom. So the two of them say, we're going to find a place to go. And the mom says, all right, be careful, hurry back. So they leave, they find a building that is a library. They go in and they accidentally get locked in. The librarian doesn't ever see them. And the dad comes back and knocks on the door eventually and says, are my daughters in there? And the librarian says, no, there's no one in here. We're closing early because of the blizzard. Goodbye. So these girls spend the night getting scared and hearing noises. And then, um, yeah, it's a little adventure. Um, to me, this seemed more like a younger middle grade. Is this middle grade still? Like maybe third or fourth grade? That's middle grade, right? I don't know. Help a girl out. Um, so it seemed a little simple and it's a little more old fashioned. I hate to say old fashioned, but like there isn't technology and there's like um, a display with old fashioned dummies like from the prairie and stuff. So the girls put on costumes, their costumes for fun and um, everything ends up okay in the end. But little adventure. It was all right. I, I'm giving it a two out of five, which is okay for me. Um, it's not great. It's not horrible. Certainly. I know I am far from the target audience for this. But I really, I mean, it was enjoyable. It was cute. Um, so, yeah. And I miss these little Apple Scholastic covers, too. Those are always really fun. So I also read, or finished my first BookTube prize book. I'm in the fiction round this time. It was one of the two books I did not want to read. So I ended up reading it. I read the whole thing start to finish in a couple of hours Saturday afternoon. And I really couldn't put it down. And then once I finished it and closed it and I was, you know, folding laundry or doing something, the more I think about it, the more I, I didn't like it, which is weird. So I didn't give anything away, right? I didn't know I didn't say anything. So yeah, I don't know about that. I'm, I'm interested to see where it's going to end up in my ranking of six once I actually finish everything else because I, I just don't know right now. Anyways, I read that. And then this... Um, this is going to hurt by Adam K. So good. I read the first half that Friday night after I finished my Friday reads video and I finished it Saturday morning. As soon as I got up, I just ran right back to the couch and I just read the rest of it. It's so, so good. It's funny and heartbreaking and infuriating and touching and uh, it's just wonderful. I mean, he's a really great writer. He's very, very funny. Um, and you, uh, you, all you Littons in the UK, Littons, this is not Litsy, this is YouTube, <laughs> sorry, everyone living in the UK or anywhere who has national health care, you are so damn lucky. I have had friends have had to claim bankruptcy because of medical conditions, they can't pay their bills. Um, I myself do not keep up with a lot of regular appointments because I just can't afford it. So it's either pay my electric bills and buy groceries and books for myself, or I go to doctor appointments that I don't think I need necessarily. I feel fine, so I'm, I'm okay. I don't want to do that, but that's, I kind of have to. So you're so lucky to have the National Health Service. I know that it's very flawed, and I know that it's extremely underfunded, 
but I mean, damn, really so lucky to have it. Wish we had it here. Don't think it'll ever happen. Hopeful, but you never know. Um, anyways, this is, should be required reading for any human being on the planet, not just people who are like American or British, but just what doctors have to go through and the crazy situations that they find themselves in, how patients treat them, the sheer number of hours that they work, regardless of it's paid or unpaid, it seems to be kind of half and half paid and unpaid. But I mean, these are just people that chose medicine as a profession and they're not superhumans. They have feelings. Something you say really affects them. If it's about them personally or about how you're feeling about something. I mean, they're still thinking about their own self and their own family when you're talking about how you feel. If they're trying to help you with a diagnosis or something, you know, it's so be kind. Say thank you. I mean, it's doesn't take a lot. So this was excellent, excellent, excellent. And I am trying not to read his next book towards the make was, was it the makeshift for Christmas night shift for Christmas towards the night shift before Christmas I'm trying to save off on that till it gets closer to the Christmas season but I have a feeling I might cave in the next few days and end up reading it anyways so anyways we'll see so really highly recommended five star honestly really good so for the uh, recommendation request I need I'm on let's see my friend Leah who I'm sure is not watching this, <laughs> she did her own little book bingo. And I thought it was just absolutely perfect. It's very, it's a very Leah <laughs> uh, book bingo, but I like a lot of the same stuff that she does. So I asked her permission and she said if I could make something similar to it and use like some of her prompts and everything. She said, yeah, absolutely, but I want to see it. So this is it. This is my scribbling. Clearly, this is not anything marginally professional or set in stone. But um, what it is, is a lot of early 20th century fiction. So some of the prompts are Slightly Foxed, which if you don't know about Slightly Foxed, you should go check them out. They are a wonderful British publisher. They um, out of print, previously out of print. Um, classics, I don't know if I think they're just, they're not just women writers it's all genders but kind of slower quieter books they have paperback and hardcovers they're wonderful uh persephone books uh a green virago let's see the other book ones other free blah 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 anyways and then there are a lot it's just mostly authors after this so daphne du maurier barbara pym elizabeth von arnhem uh, the mitford sisters uh elizabeth gouge angela thurkel E.M. Delafield, Georgette Heyer, Molly Keene, Helen Humphreys, Dodie Smith, Virginia Woolf, Edith Wharton, Penelope Lively, let's see, ba -ba -ba -ba. Anita Bruckner, E.F. Benson, Elizabeth Taylor, Winifred Watson, and then British Crime Classics. So, like, this, this much, like, is Leah's, and the ones over here were the ones I added in myself because she had some duplicates and things. So I have options for each of these, or I have a certain book already picked out, but I do need some help with Persephone's. So I thought that I had multiple unread Persephone's. Wow, Persephone's here on my shelves. I do not. The only one I can find is Miss Pettigrew's For a Day by Winifred Watson, which I have Winifred Watson as one of the authors. She's just her own square because I thought that I had two books by her and I don't. I just have this one book. So this is going to be my Winifred Watson book, but I need a Persephone recommendation. The only Persephone book I have read previously that I can remember right now is, oh my gosh, I remembered it right before I started recording and now it's gone. Uh, Cheerful Weather for the Wedding by Julia Strachey. Strachey? Mm, that's the one. Um, I read that a few years ago. I liked it. I, I don't remember a lot about it, but I know that I liked it. And I, everything in Persephone, I start looking at a catalog like that, and everything sounds good, and I want all of them now. Please and thank you. So I'm not great at narrowing things down. So if there is a Persephone book, I don't care if it's hardcover paperback, it doesn't matter to me, um, that you really recommend, please let me know. 
I don't think I have any duplicates in other things because occasionally you'll get um, a Virago that will be a Persephone, like old, an older Virago will show up as a Persephone sometimes. But um, yeah, I really need Persephone recommendations. So if you would please leave those below, I would really appreciate it. Um, let's see, what else? Nothing much. I do have a weird non-bookish question before I wrap it up. So I, in my new office, I have a window, which I, I might have mentioned before because I'm super psyched about it. I can't even tell you how much a window in an office means to me. Um, but that means I can have plants now. So I bought one tropical plant. It looks like a spider plant, only instead of white on the leaves, it's purple. Don't know what it is. There was not anything on it. It was $4 at Stein's. So whatever, I just got it. And then I just bought myself a bunch of air plants. These little weird guys. So I have a bunch of them. I'm going to, I have like some wooden bowls and I have a whole bunch of shells in my basement, like a crazy, like hundreds of shell shells from Sanibel Island in the fifties and sixties, because that's where my mom and they, they always drove down there every summer for weeks on end. So they did stuff all the time. So I have these cute little air plants, which aren't they really neat? Um, does anyone have air plants? I know I'm supposed to submerge them in water every once a week I believe and then you can mist them with water outside of that um but my little card it says I can just ask them but I'm already talking to you so I'm just going to ask you guys um I bought these on Etsy by the way from Twisted Acres this is our little card um it says not to bloom not to put the bloom in the water when you're soaking it do these things bloom I I don't see anything that looks like it could bloom. Like I thought it was just these weird leafy things. What's going to bloom? Am I crazy? Are these just too young and they're just, I don't know. I've only seen very small air plants before, not these big ones. So I don't know. So if you have any experience with air plants, I would really appreciate a tip too. Anyways, I think that's enough rambling for once for a Monday. I'm going to go grab a very late lunch and then take care of my my mom's friend she had her surgery today so I need to sit with her for a few hours till her son gets off of work tonight so I'll be doing that and reading something hopefully finishing something probably starting something new because it's me so whatever anyways hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in the next one bye